so guys in the last lecture what we did was we made the cyach that is cypress schematic in the schematic we set the ble and the pin pins then in the cy dwr we set the pins that is the rgb to the pins on the board now in this lecture we will start writing the main code okay so let's move on to the code so in source file main c we are going to paste our code i have already written the code so i'm just pasting it i'll explain you i'll walk you through the entire code now just remember these few things to write any code we first need to understand the algorithm we need to understand what is happening and how is it happening in the code right so let's first take a glance through the algorithm of the code so first of all what will we do in our algorithm we will first start our ble correct we need to start that particular component right you started your adc your pwm your timer you need to start the ble too so we will start the ble then there is something known as a stack handler we'll get to what it is what it does why do we need it i'll tell you about it but as of now just know that there is something known as a stack handler which is which is started then we have an event handler then we have an ias section and the ias section has something known as an ias handler and there is something at the side which is processing events now let's walk through the flow what is actually happening here first of all the ble will be started so we say start ble we'll write a function which will start the ble what will it do then we will ask to start the stack handler now what is the stack handler all events which are required at the starting of phase or all exceptions or events which are to be handled all conditions regarding the ble are mentioned in this stack handler then along with stack handler we also turn on the event handler event handler just like stack handler is a piece of code some little function and what it does the job of the event handler is to take care of the events which are incoming like when once you pair you will be sending some data so what you are getting will be in the form of events you will get some events or in other words i can say you will be getting some interrupts so all these events or interrupts are going to be handled by the event handler so let's just go through it again first we start ble then we start the stack handler then we start the event handler then what do we do then there is a section known as an ias section now what is ias ias is immediate alert service now if you remember ble has all services in it but do we need to start all of them we will only start the service which is required for us correct so stack handler and event handler these are these will take care of the gap and gat services but what services we are using apart from them we need to turn them on by ourselves so then we will wake a section known as the ias section the ias section will in turn wake something known as the ias handler now what the ias handler does ias handler asks the ias section okay you got something tell me what have you got so it asks the ias section for some value so we have taken care of these things now what does process events do okay process events let's see do you want to take information just once and then end the code no you want the code to be run uh, forever like for a long time right so what are you going to do you are going to accept the events every now and then so this process events is going to be in a while loop 
So every time any value is sent by the mobile, it is taken in and then something happens with the value. Now what it what exactly happens, we will go through the flow. So what happens is, you've turned on your BLE, you've turned on the stack handler, event handler, IAS section is woken up and whenever IAS section is woken up, every time it will go to the IAS handler and wake it up. And IAS handler will in turn talk to the IAS section. So now what is happening? First, say you pass some alert level, say mid alert. So one event has occurred. So this process events understands that it has some event. This process events goes and starts the event handler. It says, dude, I've got a, I've got an event. Event, you need to take care of that event. Event handler in turn goes and wakes up the IAS section. IAS section in turn goes and wakes up the IAS handler. IAS handler says, okay, you've got something. Tell me what have you got? Have you got the alert level? So it goes and asks for the alert level. So if IAS section has the alert level, it gives the alert level. This is what happens and we do some processing on the alert level that is we turn our blue LED on since it is a mid alert. So let's see. Now what has happened? The blue LED is turned on. Now we give another event that is we say turn on the red LED that is high alert. So there is another process. Again the event handler is woken up. Then the IAS section is woken up, which in turn wakes up the IAS handler. The IAS handler asks for the alert value from the IAS section and then performs some action on it. Now, you've known the algorithm fairly well. Let's just walk through the code so that we'll understand the algorithm better. So, this is our code. We won't walk through it as it is. We'll start from the main. In main section, we are first turning on the global interrupts. As I said earlier, every signal that we are going to receive, every event, every value is going to be an interrupt. So we need to wake the, we need to turn the interrupts on, we need to enable the interrupts. So this enables the interrupt. Then CYBLE says start, CYBLE start the stack handler. So we are starting our stack handler. This is in main. So let's go up. This is our stack handler. Stack handler takes two parameters like event code and event param as the values. And then it does, it performs some actions depending on the event code that it receives. Obviously after you turn on the stack handler, you will have some events received. And uh, depending on the event received, you will have to do something. Now, what does this handler actually do? See, now case. If CYBLE stack is turned on, then do something. If CYBLE, now we haven't written anything here. That doesn't mean it does nothing. There are some functions which are predefined and we don't need to explicitly define here what it does. Then we have a case CYBLE gap device disconnected. If the device is disconnected, then what you can do? It is written gap start advertising and advertising mode should be fast. This is what you should do. This is what the PSOC should do when it is disconnected. So if you happen to open a sample project, you will find multiple such cases. Like what if the connection is broken? What if there is some other error which has op happened? So everything will be inside a, this switch in terms of cases. For our case, we just need two of these and we can be done with it. What they do exactly, we don't need to get into the depths of it. It's just fine to for us to know what each thing stands for. Okay, now let's get back to our code. CYBLE IAS register attribute callback. This function turns the IAS section on. 
and it passes the IAS handler. Okay, and IAS handler is this particular function. So what is happening? We are passing a function to a function. Okay, this function stands for waking up the IAS section. So what exactly happens when we wake the IAS section? It goes to the IAS handler. So we have this uint8 alert. And what we are going to do? We have to store this. So how this is how it asks for the alert level. We have cyble IAS get characteristic value. Get characteristic value is when it asks for the alert level. CYBLE IAS alert level. What it is asking for? The alert level. Which is of the size of alert. And what is the size of alert? It is uint8. If you remember well, in CY schematic, in alert level, the alert level which is being sent is of the type uint8. Right? So we are going to receive an alert level which is of the type uint8. Thus we have defined an uint8 named alert. And we are going to store it in alert and at the address of alert. Ampersand address of alert. Then what do we do with alert? We do something. If we say the alert is 0, then turn on my green LED. Alert 0 stands for no alert. If alert is 1, turn on my blue LED. If alert is 2, turn on my green LED. Else turn on all my LEDs. So, with this case, what do we have? No alert, mid alert and high alert. This low alert, mid alert and high alert are actually values which are being transferred. Even when we select on the API, no alert and mid alert, we are actually transmitting a certain value. What value are we transmitting? 0, 1 or 2. Okay. Now, like I told you, the events will have to be processed every now and then. Every time we send a new alert value, it should work, right? It shouldn't work for just a one value and stop. So, this is what makes it work for every value. CYBLE process events. Thus, our cycle gets complete with this piece of code. So, we turn on the interrupts. We start BLE. We start the stack handler. We start the IAS section. And IAS section in turn starts the stack handler. And it says I, that it wants some more information which is the characteristic value from the IAS section itself. Correct? It is written here. Then we have an event. Then CYBLE process event processes that events. And we have one event code and event parameter present. This parameter then is passed. The parameter passed is stored in alert. And depending on the value of the alert, some action is performed. So this is our code. Now let's just build it. So we click on build and clean and build. You can see the progress here. And you can wait for some time for it to build. Okay, so now you see once you have build, you can see this message build succeeded. So if you have built for the first time, you will find it as build succeeded. Since I have built it for the second time, it is seen as rebuild succeeded. Okay, so what do I do? Now I will program. So I will go to debug and program. So in this, can you see this particular LED? Yes, that LED is blinking. It means that the code is being loaded. Once it stops blinking completely, now that you can see it has stopped blinking and you can see a constant color, a constant green color, which means our program has been well loaded. So now what we'll do, we'll open our app, SciSmart. And let's see, the beacon is present here. 
let's see if our code works first we'll go to find me and select the alert level yes it is working now what we'll do what we have done in the code is we have written certain numbers 0 we have said for no alert 1 for mid alert and 2 for high alert so we'll go to get db and in immediate alert service we will write write in the form of hex so we'll write 0x 0, 0, 0 is that is for no alert so the green led should remain on yes it remains on let's try the high alert so we'll say 0x 0, 0, 2 that is high alert and then we'll say ok can you see the led color changes then 0x 0, 0, 1 mid alert so technically speaking what this particular thing find me does and this particular get db does is find me has just converted the number format so when i'm actually selecting no alert i am passing a value 0x01 or i'm passing a value 1 effectively so if i'm using get db i will have to write the value 1 to pass that particular value okay then you can write and rewrite So this is our BLE beacon. In the next lecture, we will learn how to make our custom profile.